So today I am really happy to be joined by probably one of the most recognizable voices in wrestling in Jason Bryan. And Jason, you and I have known each other for a very long time. I think when I when I came on to the scene with Flo, you had already known a little bit about me from me posting different articles and things like that when I was working with the newspaper. And, um, you know, you were one of the first people that that actually reached out to me when I started and said, you know, welcome to this side of the wrestling world. And so that's something that I'll, I'll always remember. And um, that was always huge for me. And now getting to work with you as much as I have, you know, before I even ask you any questions, I want to tell you that I appreciate that. And I appreciate how you've always been an information vessel for me. Somebody I can shoot a text to and you get back to me, you know, even if you don't know it, you get me in contact with somebody who would. And we saw that last year, um, you know, things that were going on with the Olympics. You and I had some conversations there, mm -hmm. which helped me get some information. So one, I appreciate that. Um, so kudos to you on, on just being a stand up guy, you know, like I said, it, it's always been great for me and, and to have trustworthy resources is, is huge for somebody who's covering the sport. So, especially somebody who is as connected as you. Um, so I appreciate that. And secondly, thank you for agreeing to sit down and, and talk with me. So I'm looking forward to it. this. Is the first time that we've ever been on camera together. I know. Cause it, you know, we've talked about it for years, actually, we uh, literally years. And it would started really when I started getting into sneakers and it's yeah. like, man, we got to do a show on this. Cause I was talking like Claunch and Jacob Casper love the wrestling shoes. And I'm like, I, I don't, I'm not a wrestling shoe guy, but you're, you wrestled enough to more long and well, more than long enough to know, to know the wrestling shoes, but you're the sneaker guy. So between you and Richard Immel, it's like, all right, I'm getting into sneakers and I can blame <laughs> both of you for any time I buy a pair of shoes and my wife gets upset about it because um, there's been a couple of times where I'll take a screenshot of like, what do you think? He's like, nah, I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'm not really sold on it. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Holmes, you are kind of like the, the veto vote. Uh, Emil's going to say, yes, go for it every time. He's every time he, he doesn't push back on the matter of fact, my wife got, I don't want to say she got mad, but we both hit on the UNC toes one year yeah. in Fargo uh, last summer. And Richard had just moved and he couldn't get the shipment changed to uh, where him and Amanda were in Iowa before they moved to Colorado. And so my wife, we're in Fargo and my wife had to go to Richard's house to pick up his shoes, his shoes. in addition to dealing with my shoes and the growing, uh, I don't know what it was, 24, 25. Actually, I think I got 40 some pair, but I got like 20 some frames. So uh, yeah, it really started with it. We got to do a shoe show and then. Yeah you start doing more more stuff, the video stuff with Intermat, and then you know, obviously Olympics come and go. And it's like, man, I look down, it's almost it's like almost November. It's like Halloween weekend. So expect snow in Minnesota as it's going to be 80 today. But that's, uh, yeah, we've been talking about this for a while. Yeah, yeah, we really have. And, um, you know, it's between you and Imol and then obviously Fretwell and, and Jamil Kelly for me when it comes to, to sneakers. And we were literally just talking sneakers last night. Um, but like I said, it's well, does not like the fact that I will buy a pair of mids on occasion? Just, <laughs> you know, I mean, I get it. OK, I get the mid. I, the, I just don't understand the, the Jordan one. mid. I get it. Yeah, I have one. Thing. I have one pair and it's only because it matched the pair of lows that I have. And I, I wanted I wanted both pair of the, the the splatter Jordan one lows as well as the mids. And they didn't make them in the highs. And I like I got two. two. I got I got the pair that I thought were little rock colored because they look more maroon and then they end yeah. up being more gym red or a darker red so uh they actually end up working with saint cloud now so i can you know the best thing about that is like working with saint cloud is i can i got the chicago colorways the red black and white so a lot of options there the only other pair of the the the, the mids i have are the shiny gold ones that most people have seen kind of those i call those my final shoes yeah Although i hit this summer i got a pair that uh that are going to be my new final shoes and uh, maybe even for a big duel i've got coming up in november in a place in iowa that that'll match their color scheme as well that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, let's talk some wrestling. And why? I, I know, right? We 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 love talking sneakers, and at some point we'll do a complete nothing but sneaker show. We'll all turn the camera and and everybody will will see my my sneaker background for another chance. If you want to see it, go go uh watch the interview I did with Angel Escobedo for this year. Um, you'll get a chance to see uh some of my sneakers. But on the wrestling front, as I mentioned to you before, I remember when you were really starting to do a lot more announcing in wrestling and you started getting NCAAs and a lot of these other things. And now you're one of the most recognizable voices. And, you know, you've also mentioned you've announced a number, if not all of Jordan Burroughs titles, world titles, and so many of them. What's it like to be that person that when something like that happens, you're the one that is putting a voice to it in the arena. Most people are at home watching 
but you're the one in the arena that is putting a voice to it. What's it like when you are that first voice that people hear when Jordan Burroughs wins a title, when David Taylor wins a title, both those guys right now are looking for another world championship. Um, so what's that like for you as an American wins a title or as anyone wins a title and you're the one that, that is putting the voice to it? There's a couple ways to look at it. One, if anybody knows me, they if they know my online, you know, my form responses or my my the way I write, I tend to be long winded. And if you've heard any of my interviews, my answers tend to be long winded. I sometimes get uh, get sidetracked and I end up coming back to an answer that takes 10 minutes. You know, my wife says I can tell a story in 800 words when it could have taken eight. Uh, <laughs> that's probably the thing. So I have to edit myself. I have to make sure that the, the, the abundance of information is to a point where it's important. So obviously there's the, there's the, 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 the aura of the moment. Let's use Helen Marulis as an example. Mm -hmm. uh, that being my first Olympics had another set of issues entirely because it was just stress, but say a moment, you know, she's going to be the first American woman. Okay. That is going to be powerful for one country, but you also know you're in an impartial situation where it's, this is not a USA event. So uh, you have to make sure you are respectful to the athlete and their moment. You also have to know that, okay, there's TV here. They're not going to want their broadcasters being drowned out by the arena. Now, What's really been good is is like a side note on that is ESPN has been fantastic with me and Brian, where uh, Brian Hazard, my co-announcer at the, the D1s, we've done D3s multiple times. It depends on, you know, him with scheduling. But we, you know, where they use us as the broadcast info, so uh, as a broadcast feed. So when Suriano wrestled Spencer Lee, that's me and Brian leading the broadcast on the match introduction. So uh, that's something you have to be aware of. How are you going to call it? So uh, to Helen's situation, you, you call that big. Uh, Kyle Snyder beating Sajulaya for the first time. That you call in a, you know, there's a pop. The world title was on the line. The thing is, then you get the next year where, when Sajulaya pinned Snyder, and it's just like, you can't no sell it as much as you want it. I wanted to be like, and your winner, Abdul Rashid Sajulaya. No, I had to call that. I hate, you know, that's one thing I really don't like doing is calling it when Americans get beat in a final and calling like their opponent's big victory. Yeah. Uh, that's hard. That is the, you know, you, you do it because that's the job, but um, that is one well, thing. Emotions out of it. Yeah. yeah, it is. And like, I was in tears. I say this, that, that, that Helen winning gold was my most memorable, you know, wrestling moment as an announcer was that moment. I mean, I met her in an airport when she was 15 with Akeel Patterson on her way to Fargo. She was cutting weight. She was miserable. I think she's a sophomore in high school. And then to get to know her through the age group teams and working at USA Wrestling. And, you know, I wouldn't say like we're friends, but we're, you know, we're, we're acquaintances. Um, you know, she's been, been super nice. I mean, she's just, you know, she's a tremendous athlete, uh, you know, so to see her and know that what she went through with her own personal battles to get there and then to do it, to beat Superwoman, to beat Saori Yoshida, that was like the gravity of wrestling and the gravity of what it meant for American women and American girls to, who just wanted to wrestle. And we've seen that through the growth of women's wrestling. That's one that, you know, you, you look at it in hindsight. Well, wow, that, that was a powerful moment when all I just said, you know, you know, Helen Marulis, you know, Olympic, I can't even remember how I said it or what I said. I just remember the gravity being more important than what I said. I will say that I'm also try to be re reverent to the sport. So when Saur Yoshida is walking off that mat, she's around, you've got to walk down the mats out to the mix zone. And Helen was still, had just finished, I think, hugging, uh, her family in the stands, and then uh, Yoshida. And if you know anything about women's wrestling, the Japanese media just swarm mm -hmm. their athletes. I mean, it is a mob scene. I mean, the photographers are elbowing each other. Tony Rotundo gets run over. You know, things like that. You've got you get all those those photographer songs. And so Yoshida is standing there right at the edge before she goes to the mix zone. And I said, you know, I remember distinctly saying, I need to recognize Yoshida for what she did. Uh, you know, at you know, her, this is you know, her and Icho were were the flag bearers for women's wrestling throughout the the late nineties, all the way through an entire, you know, decade plus. So, you know, ladies and gentlemen, a great or a pioneer of women's wrestling, one of the greats of all time, you know, three-time Olympic champion, four-time Olympic finalist, Sarah Yoshida. So I gave her a little sign off as she walked out. Uh, just little things like that. I think that, that are important to moments. Um, you know, I don't really think about what I have to do in those moments other than, don't, you know, it's not like, don't screw up. It's, you know, what, you know, you, you edit yourself, 
you make sure the moment is right. And there's a couple of times where I've tried something and it didn't work. Uh, I remember in Kazakhstan, I was trying to say, you know, it'd be cool if I say like world champion in the native language of the winner. And then I did it, I think for one day, I think I had a couple different matches and I did it in, you know, did it in Spanish, did it in Russian. And then after the, after that, I was like, you know what? They're not paying me to speak other languages. They're paying me to speak English. I might as well world, you know, hit the pop yeah. of the world, you know, and maybe I'll like at the end with, you know, when the Russians were still competing, I'd say be like a, you know, champion Mira, uh, like low and as they're maybe walking off the mat, but I don't want to, when there's a big moment, like, I think my, my easiest call is three time or, you know, you know, when they win multiple titles, you can hit that pop on the two yeah. times. So when they've got the flag up, they're doing their lap, you know, you say something quick to hit the moment. Wet, let them do their victory lap at the world championships. And as they're maybe coming off, they're walking down the steps, for example, that's when maybe you can drop in uh, a nugget or, uh, you know, at the end of it, I think we had a, you know, the Hungarian, um, excuse me, Bulgarian in the Olympics this year, first time since uh, Valentin Jordanov had won a medal. So I popped that into the close for the first time since, you know, you hit a history nugget. Yeah. I almost thought that was maybe a little too long, but you hit it so the gravity of the moment is picked up by not just a fan. So if you've got knowledge that's relevant there, just the problem with me is I have so much that I want to say. And I feel like if I say too much, I've ruined the moment. Or if I don't say enough, I feel like I could really drop that in there. So yeah. a lot of it is just being able to edit and feel because, and you know, what, it's not, not perfect. Uh, there's so many times I've said a call, you know what? I think I would have done that better. So um, yeah, it's, there's, there's a cool factor about it. Um, I'm not going to lie, you know, for those of us that are in the media and, you know, we put ourselves out there a lot, there's got to, there's a little bit of uh, a little bit of ego that goes along with it. You're like, you know, that you've got to do a good job. And you're like, if you don't think you can do a good job, that's when, you know, doubt comes in. Uh, so you got to be confident. You got to, you got to make sure you, again, you edit yourself. That's again, that's the hardest thing for me, I think is anticipating the moment. If you have something kind of scripted, it doesn't tend to go the way you want it to. So I've got a couple things maybe here, here, here. And if whichever way it goes, we're going to drop here. Sometimes you just forget it and you just say the first thing that comes to your mind and it works. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, the, the world, you've got to be a little bit more regal because you're not, you're not playing favorites and same, same with the championship finals, but I'll, I'll always point to an NAIA final. I had a couple years ago and kid from uh kid from Indiana tech, you know, Sawyer Miller was his name and you know, he won an overtime and I just blurted that it's Miller time. I don't know why it wasn't a, you know, <laughs> these, are, these are like Christian colleges for the most part. They're not yeah. they don't have beer sponsors. I mean, so it was like, all right, you know, that was one that I just felt like it was natural. It was there and it worked. Um, so that's, you know, I, I call that kid's match the same way I did Spencer Lee's final. So, uh, those are the things too, is, is just, you know, again, I'm getting to that long winded editing myself situation with this answer. So, uh, and you know, having somebody like Brian there to be like, Hey, no, he, he, yeah. you know, a calming presence to balance me out, even though we're just as goofy. So, so uh, the, the thing, you know, you talk about the, the moments in women's wrestling, and obviously we had a number of them this year with the, with the Olympics, with Sarah and then Amit obviously winning winning titles and you know us having multiple finals on the women's side when when there is so much history that has happened specifically in women's wrestling and how it's growing how do you censor that emotion especially and and what you know specifically with with Amit's win this year what was that like in the arena and how did you not get caught up in the moment as you have a job to do on the microphone and she's winning. Some of it with a meet was different because one, we had already gone through once with Helen. So Helen broke, broke, well, she broke the ice. She broke the glass ceiling. She broke that emotional barrier uh, in a lot of ways. And now this, by this point, it had been my third Olympic games that I had announced my fourth that I'd attended. So uh, I think the difference was, was we didn't know if Helen was going to win. We mm -hmm. didn't know if she was going to, I mean, Yoshida was a wall. Whereas a meet had won, multiple world age group titles. I mean, she won, she tripled up the last two years. Yeah. And then, you know, it's, I don't know, last time she, last time she lost, I don't think she had a driver's license yet. So, <laughs> you know, but so when she's the favorite, you know, even though she's at a new weight class and seeing some people she hadn't seen before, uh, I wasn't really worried there. I know that that's kind of a dangerous thing to go in thinking, oh, well, they can't lose because, you know, wrestling any given day. Uh, the one there was just call it clean, call it right. The, you know, the energy in the arena in, in Paris was fantastic. Uh, you know, obviously we didn't have anybody in Tokyo. Um, that was sterile. And, and Rio was not really a wrestling crowd. Neither was London. 
And in London had that, you know, the binary code, you know, of wrestling, the 01, 10, 10 matches mm -hmm. that really were just a dark age. So uh, this, I, I really like to look at Paris as like one of the first real experiences that I've had uh, for the game. So with Amit, it was, again, okay, she's going to be the youngest American woman to do this. She's going to be this. I mean, it's like th there wasn't, there was, th th there, the, the groundwork had been laid for her. So she really wasn't the first in, you know, I could have probably pulled up a first, but it would have been so pro-American. It might, it would have been forcing it. So with her, you just call it. She's excited. Let the moment go. It, you know, let the crowd kind of, the, the crowd really kind of drives it sometimes. If you need an extra pop, it's all, you hit a pop, get the crowd to come behind you. If not, sometimes you're just there to add a little bit of ambiance to the crowd going ballistic. So yeah, her, hers was actually pretty easy because it's not, I can't, like a lot of times I can't remember what I say unless somebody's, hey, that was good. It's like, well, what'd I say? Because again, it's, it's a lot of its feel. Yeah. Well, how do you prepare for these, right? Because on the NCAA level, the names are normally pretty straightforward. There's not too many names that we're scratching our heads about. And at that point, I mean, I think we... I mean, Logan Steber is not tough to say. <laughs> exactly, right? Like, yes, like Jordan Oliver, not Stieber. tough to say. Spencer Lee, not tough to say, right? So on the international side, and then, you know, I do want to move to the NCAA side, but on the international side, how do you prepare for all the different names that you're going to have to say? How do you have them written down? How much how much time are you taking to practice them and make sure that you have them all down properly? Who are you getting the pronunciations from as well? Because obviously there's a language barrier there, but like, what is that preparation like for an international tournament, be it a, a world championship, a Pan Am, a Olympics, whatever it is, what is that preparation like for you to make sure you have the names down properly? Yeah, I don't think there's a Duolingo Chechen yet. Uh, if there is, I haven't quite figured it out. Uh, I'm still working back through Spanish now. Um, so let's start with the Pan Americans because that's uh, the Spanish language is where I have the most experience. I took three years of Spanish in high school. Um, I, I know enough to understand certain things and get by. I am not conversational in any stretch of the imagination. I'm actually, I'm only like a level 16 on Duolingo. Like I, there's certain words like I can, okay, I can remember this. I'm in Guatemala with Rich Bender. We're trying to find a supermarket. And I'm like, we got directions to the wrong place because they didn't speak a whole lot of English in Guatemala yeah. city. So uh, I point to, uh, you know, officer is like, he's like, I was like, um, da, 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 supermercado. And he points over there and I'm like, I couldn't see it. And I saw this big yellow pipe and I'm like, um, yellow, yellow. I'm a real here. See, so we're right here. Then we get into the store <laughs> and it's like, Rich is like, where's the water? He's like, donde esta agua grande? And I'm like, it's simple. It's a simple, like Spanish one phrase. Yeah. And just those little things. So, uh, the naming pronunciations and how Spanish works, that one's probably the easiest for me because I know the Enyes, the Elyes, Enyes, um, you know, where the accents are. You know, my uh, the Spanglish actually kind of, it's almost, I don't know if it's cultural appropriation or not. <laughs> it's, you know, sometimes you can just like, oh, yeah, great. The, the, the gringo is really laying it thick on the Spanish. There. <laughs> so Spanish is easiest. If I, you know, there's a Latin American name. Now, Brazil throws you for a loop because they're Portuguese. So it's not the same. It's similar, but it's not the same. Now, I started my, so my first world championships announcing was in 2015 in Las Vegas with Ken Berger, uh, Sandy, A.L. Hazlip. Hazard was on the side doing ESPN broadcast. So uh, Ken and I, and, and Ken Berger had helped me come through and got me gigs when I was just coming out of high school. And you know, I'm 18 years old doing a regional tournament and Ken did the state tournament and a lot of stuff in the Hampton Roads area. So, and Ken was an international official. So he had done, he had done the Olympics in 12. He'd done the junior worlds in Beijing uh, when Bubba Jenkins, you know, 757, you know, guy right there, you know, we, we all knew each other. So uh, Ken had, you know, he knew the referees and where to talk. So it started with just a spreadsheet. So for those who may not know a whole lot about the extreme nerdiness that is my life, I live in a world of spreadsheets and pivot tables and V lookups and X lookups. And I make lists for everything. At one point I was keeping a list of the various beers from Minnesota that were in my fridge. <laughs> and I believe you said that doesn't surprise me one bit. Yeah. When I talked about my beer fridge as I was preparing this room for, for the NCAA's after party that never happened because of COVID. But I, you know, I keep lists of things. I track things. I want to know, I mean, I keep a list of how many world championships and in, in NCAAs have worked. So what I did was, is we, I, I had a spreadsheet and I had it grouped and it was a simple, simple drag, you know, sort filter. Mm -hmm. Well, we did that and we, we'd go down and I type in the names phonetically. So we had the country code, 
the the athlete. We get the athlete list from USA Wrestling or from UWW, and then we'd go in and fill it in, and then we'd go through their old database. And that was the old painstaking process of like, okay, type in the name. And it's like, okay, they're a world championship. So I'd be like, JW-3-17, or well, in this case, let's say 11. So that was Junior Worlds Bronze in 11. So I'd have that for like every statistical for every athlete that I could find. Now, the names, just kind of a phonetic pronunciation, like Zarina, you know, or something like that, or you know, Gogliashvili. Let's use the Georgians because those are pretty simple. So it started with keeping a list and then I update that list every year. And then after a while, I'm like, I'm doing this wrong. So now I have one master list that if everybody at the European championships that I work or the junior worlds or the senior worlds, I keep a list and I go back to that 2015 list. So now I've got nine years of athlete data. And, you know, with, a lot of times I'll have when they used to have their birth dates in there, I have their, so I know how old they are. I know when their birthday is. I know when there's an athlete out there having a birthday. I can throw that out there. It's all in that list. It's highlighted. So when we get the names, all right, I don't know these names. So it starts with usually, all right, uh, Georgians are, are relatively easy. You know, Edzes, Odzes, Vili's, those you can pretty much figure out. You know, the G's, there's no, it's not Georgie, it's Georgi. You know, it's not not Gino, it's Geno. Mm -hmm. Things like that, you, under, you, you look at it, try not to Americanize the name. Uh, Belarusian alphabets, uh, the, the U's are actually V's. So like, let's look at Harvard, Yaroslav Slavikovsky. It's not Yaroslav Slavikovsky, it's Slavikovsky because those are V's because of Belarusian alphabet. Um, so you you pick up things like that. Uh, the Koreans and the, the Chinese, the names are backwards. So it's last name first, first name last. Japan is kind of, they don't really care about the Western. So they I, that one's one I typically kind of stay with first and last. But the pronunciations, you go to the back, uh, like Kenny did, we, we he was talking to his referee friends, and I've made friends with a lot of the referees now because I usually stay at the same hotel as they do. Uh, so I'll be like, hey, you know the Swedes. Like uh, I'll ask Lynn from from Sweden, hey, it's like uh, Jobrek, no, 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 Sherbere. I'm like, what? <laughs> Jobrek, no, Sherbere. You know, so you get the umlauts and you get that. So a lot of it's just making friends with people that can help you. Um, you know, like, uh, you know, Yi from China, she comes up and I got an audio file of her at the Olympics and she read all the names out. So like, yeah, Chien Chigajigan, I might've said the name, I'm probably pulling the wrong name, but like those names, I just, I'll hear it. I'll hear it. I'll hear it. And I'll type it in. And then sometimes I'm like, I just, I need to make sure. And I'll go back and I'll tell, I'll ask the referee or I ask Sammy. I'm like, Hey, Hey, do we got anybody from, from Czechia here? Or, Hey, is there anybody from, you know, from, from Finland? Uh, or in some cases, like uh, at Maya, she's from Estonia. She's Estonian and then Finnish Finns or languages are similar. It's in her Facebook message. Hey, how do you pronounce these names? And she'll say it back to me in, in an audio file. Minga Batsuk was a three-time D3 champ at St. John's. He's the, the general secretary for Mongolia. Like maybe one of the, the few Mongolians I've known that are very fluent in English because he went to high school here. He went to college here. Hey, I got a Mongolian name. I'll try to read them off. He'll be like, yeah, that's pretty good. But here it is. And he'll read them back <laughs> on an audio file. And I remember, like, so the heavyweight, it looks like Lavangarel Montour. You're like, no, that's Togif. There's not a T in that guy's name. <laughs> so a lot, of, and then you see it, you get them right, and then you go back and maybe just Togif. No, no, Togif. Like Togif, no, Togif. So a lot of repetition. And the thing is, I think they appreciate it. if you get as close as you possibly can, they really do appreciate it. So yeah. uh, a lot of it's trial and error. If you say something wrong, they'll come over like, hey, no, 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 it's 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 uh, Stevo, not Stevo, Stevo. I was like, you know, so. If you say it wrong, all right. Thankfully, they don't get mad at you a whole lot. Other than I will say Kyrgyzstan this year, they sent me a, a DM on Instagram. Hey, can we get their names spelled right? I'm like, spelled or announced? Announced. Okay. What do you got? Uh, and then they would say they said the names. I've been saying uh, you know, Jolombekov's name wrong. So like not, I've been saying more of a Z versus a J. So I got them right for the I was like, thank you. <laughs> you know, I'll be like, okay, hard E, tiny back of a, or a tiny back of a, tiny back of a, you know? So I, I, I use any type of resource I can to put those things. And then I type it in that sheet. And then the next time I got an event entry list, match name, X, look up, pull them in, boom, research done. Is it the same? I'm, I mean, obviously the, there's not a lot of names in the NCAA ranks that would really throw anyone for, for a loop really. Um, but is it the same type of preparation? Is it, you know, getting rosters from different schools um, is it talking with different people to figure out who's going to be in the lineup here? Or, you know, is it the same type of preparation that I'm doing when it comes to doing a season preview, right? Mm -hmm. Or a lineup look for, you know, before a season starts. Absolutely. And 
thankfully a lot of the sports information offices do have you know they don't we don't do match notes as much because our you know our dual meets are hit or miss when they can be but uh, like Iowa, for example, their match notes, there's pronunciation guide. So like Joel Jesaroga, who transferred to St. Cloud State, I'm doing the prep for St. Cloud State's intra-squad, and I'm like, Jesaroga, there we go. Like, I, I knew how to say it because him and his brothers have been wrestling forever, but like, that's the name, a pronunciation guide. And then sometimes you'll get in a situation where uh, Sandy and I will joke about this one too because we both had them. Uh, there are the, the the Vietnamese name Nguyen, so N-G-U-Y-E-N. It could be Win, Nguyen, or Nguyen if it's yeah. American. So we had one year, we had three names all in the same bracket, all pronounced in a different way. A different way. So that's one where you're like, crap, which one is it? But yeah, the prep. So like right now I'll have, again, Spreadsheet City. I'm matching up uh, names on the rosters with names in track wrestling so that the, you know, the results things pan out. So when I do that preview guide and I have all that information for D1s, I'm looking at these names hundreds of times. So, well, maybe not hundreds, but I'm looking at thousands of names multiple times a mm -hmm. week. So if there's one that I don't know that I'm going to have to get, that's one I can anticipate. Unless, some, rarely does somebody slip through. Now, uh, I think there was one where we had two coaches arguing. Like, I think one was that uh, was Perrine or Perrine, because uh, one was at Ohio, one was at Gardner-Webb, and the coaches were saying, no, they say it this way. Well, they say it this way. So I'm like, which one is it? I mean, sometimes, I mean... <laughs> You get them at least twice a tournament. Yeah. You want to get it right. So uh, sometimes those are tricky, um, you know, and then like Ma Frank Matty Ace. For years it was Matty Ace. And then in his last year, it was like, then it's like Matty Ace. I'm like, where did that come from? Hazard? Come it's, from? it's like grandfather. Uh, so, you know, yeah, he had him at e EIWA. So usually it, you, if you do, you say something wrong, you're going to get, you're going to hear about it. So you just make sure you correct it and move on. You don't, you don't harp on it. So, um, and again, brothers were a sport that's got a lot of family. So you look at him, he's like, Oh, that's, you know, how do you say that's, that's, oh, it's Danny Chase. That's Dan Chase kid, you know, things like that. So, I mean, uh, I remember when it was, when everybody was calling them Hidley until they, uh, corrected everyone and let them know it's Hidley, right? Yeah. So, like, so many people for so long, even people that I thought would know better, were calling them Hidley. At the Ironman one year, I think everybody was calling Boris Novotkov, Novacek. I was like, that's. Not That's even Novacek, and he Close. plays the NFL. <laughs> he is he is not Polish. You know? It's like he's Bulgarian. He's not, you know, it's like. Uh, yeah, yeah, Jay Novacek reference. Yeah, it was like one of that. Uh, I think that's where they were probably drawing it from. But um, usually, I, I try to make sure that if if I if I usually I'm not surprised by anything I see. I will say that D3 and the NAI because I don't see them as much. Mm -hmm. I will email the coaches ahead of time. Like I'll have a list of names. Like I'm not sure on these guys. And I'll email or I'll email, hey, do you guys have any pronunciations? That, e even if it's like Justin pronounces his name with J Houston or something like that. Did, anything, if I see it, if if it's different, let me know. I mean, Mikhail McGee, he was my, my guy from ODU. Like I, I said, I said, Michael McGee at the Midlands. And then, you know, Daryl Thomas, like, hey, it's Mikhail. I'm like, okay, never going to make that mistake again. And, I'm, and, and when I hear it on a broadcast, I'm texting him like, it's McHale, like Kevin McHale. Like I'm just, every if I can help other people with that too, that's where I'm like, I'm trying to like, I'm not trying to like, hey, I know more than you. I'm trying to correct you. No, I'm trying to get, yeah. help you get it right. So, um, you know, so those are, those are things that I also hear. If I hear a broadcast and it's wrong and I have quick access to somebody I know, I let, let's let's use uh, World Team Trials. I sent one of, the, one of the guys, I sent JD a note about one of the, the women's wrestlers. Like, hey, it's this. And from there on out, they were they were good there. So I try to help everybody else out with it too. So uh, it's not just my research that helps me. It's my research I try to try to make accessible to everybody else. So yeah, like I said, it's been it's helped me throughout my entire career. And like I said, whenever I can hit you up for something, I'm definitely going to do it. Um, you're usually the first resource that comes to mind when I'm like, all right, I need some sort of stat or some sort of information. Um, I geek out over that stuff, man. I like you know I've got a lot of research projects and stuff, but I'm just like, oh, that's one I haven't thought about. And that's yeah. another thing, like with the preview guide, like I want to think of questions that if they're going to be a random question, somebody's going to ask me, I want to be able to have that access. And sometimes, you know, and what I love about that is being able to drop it out at the right moment at nationals. Like, you know, I was a little late on Caleb Henson becoming the first NCAA D1 champ from Georgia, but I, I got, I was like, wait, 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 wait. Ah, yeah, there we go. Boom. And I got it as he's walking off. So I did, I kind of got that a little late, but uh, you know, those are the things like, you know, the factoids that I feel are sometimes more important than the pronunciation. Because I, I, I say this, like at NCAA championships, 18,000 people, 
I guarantee that 99% of that, that room knows more about wrestling than I do. They are not, they do not, they don't listen to my podcast to hear about me setting up a single leg. Cause it was God awful. I, I mean, my, my daughter knows that a level change better than I do this day. <laughs> so, you know, I want to give you something that you did not, that you are going to be coming away from that tournament with something you didn't know before. Even if it's one thing like, Oh, I didn't know that. Or like, Oh, this guy leads the nation and falls, you know, Oh, well, that's, that's cool. Oh, this person has a win streak is this, this win streak ranks this all time. Just mm -hmm. those little additional nuggets. I feel like in addition to the pronunciation, that's where like the geekery comes in the, the research, like, Oh, you know, you know, like Batterdine Bal uh, Baldma from Doan a couple of years ago was going for a fourth NAI title, got, won his hundredth match, and then got beat in the semis. Right? I was like, his win streak ended at one hundred. I'm like, <laughs> it's like, okay, we're adding. Oh, here's another win. Like, and one year there was a guy, and some it doesn't always go over well either, because um, one year there was a kid from Hastings in the NAI. He had won, I think he was like sixty nine and four. He had wrestled so many opens. And I'm like, nation's leader, and I will do everything. Yeah, he is the nation's leader and wins. And I mentioned it twice during the first session because he had a pigtail and then he had a second match. We got it. The NAIA got an email from an angry parent. We're not sure what school they were from, but it was like basically, oh man, you're now, oh, there are guys going out there for five All American titles. You're talking about some, what is he seated fourth? That's why he's seated. I was like, um, no, I've talked about every single one of the things you did. Hell, sorry that I'm giving a kid from a school you've never heard of a yeah. plug because he's winning almost 70 matches in a season. So, you know, so sometimes people don't appreciate it because they feel like that's all you're saying. So, yeah. so we've, we've dug into a lot of the things that are happening at the end of seasons, right? I mean, obviously world championships in, in the Olympics are the penultimate NCAA is certainly the penultimate as well, but where are you at during the season? Cause you know, People like me, I know that you're doing this, this, and this. But a lot of other people, they're like, okay, well, we're at NCAAs. We know the people that we're going to hear, or we know we're at the World Championships, or we're watching World Championships. Those are the voices that we're going to hear. But where where are you during the season, and what events are you hitting? That's one that's been uh, – it, it's always been – ever flowing. Cause obviously when I lived in Virginia, you know, I was, I was doing stuff at ODU. And then even when I lived in Pennsylvania, I would drive back and do their dual meets there. That got a little bit more difficult when I flew out. And I actually, there was a run there when I, I left Virginia and started work for the NWCA in 2005, where I didn't announce as much. So to back that up a little bit, I was announcing a tournament every single weekend during my entire seven year undergraduate career in college. So uh, actually it was probably my last six years. Cause I started doing regionals and I started doing events and like, Oh, I was, announcing and so i was seeing the high school kids and i was doing the rankings because i had all the results and i'd be typing like i basically it was a way for me to like make money for i would say to pay tuition but let's be honest what was i why was i in college for seven years i was running a website i was working a newspaper and i was pretty social so um <laughs> you know you gotta, you, gotta you, you i'm not gonna lie sometimes you're 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 calling up your phone your phone bank to see if your your direct deposit has gone in so you could pay your tab so <laughs> you know but so up until 2005 i was announcing every weekend so then i worked for the nwca started doing the, the results and the rankings running intermat back at the time and it was like okay i didn't announce i announced frank and a marshall home duels I did some Frank and a Marshall women's lacrosse postseason. One year I did the EIWAs, and that was the first big event I had done in a long time. And I that was that was in 2008. And that was kind of the moment where getting back, that's kind of started getting back into it. And then Matt Storniolo and, and Drew Periano, uh, when I moved to USA Wrestling, they're like, hey, you know, we've got a we got a quad. So I came out and did this like this Wildcat duels or something. It was like, all right, you know, Abby was still living my my Wife was still living in Minnesota, so it was a weekend. I can go back, drive out, you know, figure things out. And then uh, Midlands popped back up. So I got back into it doing Midlands, and I think that's when people started to hear me that were more than just my Virginia people or the the few people on the East Coast. So um, that's kind of what got the announcing thing back geared up again. And when I settled back in Minnesota 2012, really wasn't doing a whole lot. It was a lot of podcasting. I had relaunched Matt Talk and – the the opportunities to announce like were, were weird because again it's like uh, they you know Sandy and those those folks were still doing the nationals the big events were were there and it was like okay I'm just here so I kind of had a lull there 2015 when I got when I started doing the, the the worlds and then 16 doing the Olympics then all of a sudden my door started getting knocked on a lot more <laughs> so uh, that opened things up Little Rock launched their program so in doing the podcast to build them up to tell the story of Year Zero uh, I said I want to do your first duel. Because I, that's the best way to end that story was was I got to be there for it, mm -hmm. uh, and then Greg Hatcher's like, yeah, anytime he wants in, he's coming. You know, we we got it, we got it. So 
I, you know, that kind of coincided with the drop of that school in Norfolk. So, uh, all right, well, I'm not going to fly home to announce any duels in Virginia anymore. Guess I'm flying a little rock to do some duels. So I did a couple duels that first year and then, uh, really didn't have it. That was really my only home team. And I was just doing the postseason. And then Augsburg would, would bring me up for battle of the Bergs, which if that is crazy, I was disappointed. I didn't get to do it, uh, this year, but, uh, I heard Kelby did a really good job in my, in my, in my spot there, but, the opportunity to do that and then okay here comes d3s and then then i get called into like lacrosse i go down to lacrosse and do a one-off there or you know then all of a sudden augsburg they don't do that many duels but i live 15 minutes from augsburg so i got three two, you know two three four duels a year okay good then okay here comes st cloud state hockey just happens to show up so i got 18 events there then mm -hmm. st cloud state wrestling so my home teams uh, the hired guns i'm for are little rock for probably two three times a year uh, again because getting down there kind of coincides with other events. Augsburg, because their their schedule really kind of works. Uh, St. Cloud State Wrestling, which is my second year. I got their wrestle-offs tomorrow night. And then you throw in college hockey into that, which has kind of been really kind of re-energized me to want to do these things a lot more because just, you know, you, you don't do it a whole lot. You kind of forget your passion for it. And then hockey has given me an opportunity to do get a lot more reps. So, yeah, the big events are cool, like, you know, the Worlds, the Olympics. But, you know, a dual meet with, with Augsburg and Loris, that's cool. Like a dual meet with... Uh, Minnesota State Mankato and, and St. Cloud State is cool. Little Rock and just is cool in general because it's Little Rock and what that whole program's done. So those are my home teams. So sometimes I have to balance as a, as a tiering. I mean, as much as I want to get down to Little Rocks, you know, if there's something 15 minutes away that's that's up on the list, that's going to pay a little bit more priority than trying to fly through Atlanta and connect to Little Rock or fly to Memphis and drive two hours to Little Rock. So Little Rock, Augsburg, and two sports at St. Cloud State is, is my normal season regimen with um, I guess I'll drop it here now. Um, I will be announcing Iowa, Iowa State at Carver Hawkeye. So that is one Terry Brands called me about last week. Uh, I had the weekend open. I am I was I'm pumped because I never thought I'd ever get to be a do du to a duel in in, in Carver. I mean, I've done the Olympic trials there, but Iowa dual meets, man, there's something else. And I, you know, they've they've got an announcer and he's he's gonna be tied up that weekend. And I'm like, all right, I yes, I will, I will do yes, yes. Yes, I had to turn down Ned Shuck at Bellarmine because I just couldn't work. Uh, they've got Iowa coming in. So, uh, you know, Hazard's got that one. So, you know, I, I get I get pulled in a lot of places or try. Hey, can you make it work? I say, ah, I'm booked that weekend. And, I, you know, it's a good problem to have even because I hate saying no to anybody. But those are uh, it's a long way to get to my schedule. See, yeah. I get sidetracked, man. <laughs> I mean, yes, but I mean, the 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 nugget in there is that you're going to be the voice for a night with Iowa versus Iowa State, which will be. Um, yeah, I guess I probably should have told Kevin Dresser that before I told you that. Uh, <laughs> our relationship goes back to when I was in high school. So, yeah, I'm well, you can you can let him know before this comes out, so that way he's not he's not sidetracked. Yeah, no that. pressure. Oh, by uh, the way, the Hawks have brought in a hired gun. So yeah, yeah, but I mean, I think it's going to be awesome. Caro Hawkeye is obviously electric. I've had a chance to be there for a couple of duels, um, as well as being in Oklahoma State for some duels that and things that uh, that took place in Stillwater. So always electric in, in those historic places. It'll be awesome to, you know, at least I'll obviously be watching. So hear your voice when some of the big things happen in Carver Hawkeye this year to kind of wrap everything up. I just want to get a little bit of a tidbit of like what your experience is with being on the mic in all these different places. Is there a favorite? Uh, I know you've, you've mentioned calling Helen's uh, you know, incredible win at the Olympics, but is there a favorite and, and one that when you look back at your career, as far as you've come at this point, you're like, wow, that's a long list of things that I've done. And I'm kind of surprised at what I've been able to accomplish. You know, when I was, do you remember the show dream job, the, uh -huh. the reality show where, you know, the winner would get a spot, would get a contract at ESPN. Yeah. And uh, Mike Hall won that one. He is currently on the Big Dead, Big Ten Network. And I remember looking at that. I was working at the newspaper. Uh, I was I started there as a, as a phone snagger in high school. And I was I was working there and I was like, well, you don't you apply for a dream job? I'm like, no. I'm like, Why not? Like, I was like, I didn't hear me, the bravado. I wanted to work my way into it. I wanted to earn it. So I always thought that I was going to be, when I graduated college at 25, I was going to be on ESPN. That was, that was the thing. I wanted to be the most recognizable sports broadcaster since Howard Cosell. Like that was the 
That was my dream mm -hmm. starting in like the fifth grade. You know, I would not miss NFL primetime with Chris Berman and his nicknames and uh, TJ. You know, th that's the only time you could see Buccaneers highlights back in the 90s, by the way, because they were <laughs> god awful. So, you know, watching Sports Center religiously. So, getting into announcing all these sports in high school, I, I thought I would eventually probably end up probably carving out a pretty decent career. That was what I wanted to do. And then I didn't know wrestling was going to be the thing that took me to the Olympic games multiple times. And you, this was not, you know, this was, this was not on my bingo card. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you look at what the sport has done for me, even though I, you know, my attempt at wrestling was flailing, it was, it was not good. Uh, I, I joke that my wrestling career, you can put on a post-it note. I mean, matter of fact, one time the, the guy wrestled my first ever tournament at, at a middle school in Hampton at the Bethel Open, which I was second place in because there was two people in the weight class. <laughs> I beat a bouncer at the bar at one of the bars at ODU back in the day. And I remember wearing my Pennsylvania Fargo jacket and, you know, PA wrestling. Cause that's, you wear a PA wrestling jacket around Virginia. You're like, yeah, they're, they're not going to mess with, you know, plus I'm, um, you know, at the time, three bills with a big goatee. I'm usually the last guy you're going to mess with. Well, Andre, his name was Andre Elliott. He was a single state, single A state runner up from the Eastern Shore. And he's like, oh, yeah, where'd you wrestle? And I was like, yeah, here's me. This is the only time I've ever fibbed about my wrestling career. And I got, like, instant wrestling karma for it. But, yeah, yeah, I was a state runner-up in uh, Pennsylvania. He goes, oh, yeah, I was a state runner-up at, at uh, Eastern Shore in Northampton. I looked at him. I'm like, I'm sorry. No, I no. you're Andre Elliott, aren't you? He goes, yeah, I go, yeah, I'm not a state. I I was just saying that just because it's Jackie. You beat me my first ever match, and my coach told you to take it easy. I was that was you. It's like, yeah. <laughs> so I got that bit of instant wrestling karma. You do not. Do not. <laughs> so, uh, so, and then, you know, I'm not thinking about the Olympics there. I'm thinking about just, okay, I, I just don't want to get thrown out of this bar, but, you know, doing all the sports that I did basketball, a lot of men's and women's basketball, baseball at ODU, you know, I have, I have a, a great appreciation for, for women's college sports too. You know, I announced my first national championship I ever announced was the field hockey national championships at ODU. They beat Carolina in the finals. That was the last national championship the school's ever won. And if the way things are being run right now, it's going to be the last time they ever win anything. But uh, that's another thing. But yeah. um, but I look back at all those sports and I'm like, you know, I did eight sports in high school. I've, I've done roller derby. I, I didn't. It's not like I was chasing an itch. I just liked being around sports. Uh, you know, I, you know, I'd sit there and pay attention to the Derby News Network, which doesn't exist anymore because women's flat track roller derby. When I lived in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, you know, announcing Division Threes has opened up a door to a great sports environment. The Division Three National Championships are one of my favorite five tournaments in the world mm -hmm. to go to every year. Um, didn't know I was ever going to be here with that. I just it's a weird it's it's weird because I, you know I feel like I have a a a skill set that is really hard to pinpoint cuz I can generate and formulate agate off the APY you know on a I can read I can design news pages I can go and cover a story I can announce I can do broadcast I can do the graphic I can design the web there's so many different things that I've I've got a pretty good grasp on but nothing is like jack of all trades master of none kind of thing but ultimately, I think I think announcing is where I kind of probably found. Okay, that's probably where I'm really the best, and I don't know. I didn't know if I accepted that uh, right away because I felt like I wanted to be I wanted to be bigger than just the arena guy. Yeah. And then you go through these events, and then you see that that arena guy commands a crowd. Like at the NCAA championships, you're commanding eighteen thousand people. Mm -hmm. They're they're not waiting on you, but you are what they hear. You are their soundtrack. Yeah. Um. So did I know I was going to be here? No, I, 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 did I ever think the Olympics were, you know, did I even think I don't know? I'd like to go to an Olympics. I thought I was going to brought, I wanted to be on NBC doing the Olympics. You know, I wanted to be what Jason Knapp is doing. You know, I wanted to be with him, but again, he's not there. He's, he's in Connecticut. He doesn't, you know, yeah. some of them don't get to go on site for all these things. So I, you know, I've, I've been to 30 countries and 43 States, mass majority of them are for, for, for wrestling. So mm -hmm. it, it's, I, it's it's weird to say you know, to talk about yourself so much and say it's humbling, but you know I don't take a compliment very well. I struggle with that, and that's where I've, I, I've I'm trying to learn to be like, all right, you know, talk myself out of answers and talk myself away and you know ramble on. But it's it's hard to really understand how I got here, and then when I look at it, it's like I just I did what I always wanted to do. I yeah. paid my dues. Like I sat there and I, you know, yeah, in my twenties, I was like, I can do that. I can do that. And sometimes part of paying your dues is getting gut checks. When wrestling 411 tanked, that was a shot to my ego. And it was a, a career setback. I thought it was the end and it worked out for me. And I ended up 
being better at a different skill set, which got me at a different job, which ended up leading to this, leading to this, leading to this. So the just having those opportunities is something I am extremely grateful for. I know that if it if I wouldn't have had the support system that I've had and never burning a bridge where I left a job. I, ne- I didn't leave USA Wrestling on bad terms. I didn't leave the NWCA on bad terms. I didn't leave the newspaper on bad terms. They weren't really pleased with me quitting two months after going full time. But by the end of that that wrestling season, I'm back stringing for them again. So yeah. it's those relationships have really helped me along the way too because people do business with people they know, like, and trust, right? Well, I, th- I think I've got most of those three uh, if not all three of them, with the people that hire me, UWW, the NCAA, USA Wrestling, uh, St. Cloud State, Augsburg, Little Rock. I feel like I, I feel like they're calling me because not not only do I a good job, but they like they like me being around and they they like what I bring to it. So um, the Olympics is a very 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 great byproduct of all those years of generally being a goofball, but actually just kind of kind of being pretty. What well, I think of being pretty good, but. I don't know, man. Like I said, Ryan, I stumble with these type of responses, man, because I just I don't know how to thank people the right way other than saying thank you. I don't know how to credit everybody that helped me along the way all the time. And that is, is that a character flaw? I don't know. It's just something that I, I love doing what I do. And and I'll say I'll bring this back to hockey for a second, because if, if, I, if I don't know if I would have the passion that was reignited like I did three years ago when I started with St. Cloud State Hockey, because in wrestling, I only get to control have a crowd a couple times a year. Mm-hmm. Hockey, St. Cloud State draws four, at least 4,000 a game. So I get that instantaneous. And when you call the goal and they're responding to your goal call, there is some electricity go through. And that's like, this is why I, I – it's not why I like it because I like the sport. I like I like calling wrestling because I like the athletes to have their moment. But for a for my situation, what, what drives me to do a good job – is that feeling when you say something and the crowd goes nuts? Yeah, that's a cool feeling. So I, I think that answered your question. Um, I hope it did because I did. again I get so tied up in in how much I love this stuff that I get I just get scatterbrained. I, I can talk twenty minutes and not make any sense. <laughs> so I just get so I, I love the sport. I love I love college wrestling. I love Olympic wrestling. I love high school wrestling. Um, I mean I wouldn't just spend my time doing random stat digs if I didn't think it was going to help the sport in some way, you know, like your questions or questions of Fargo. I created the, the, the Fargo almanac. Cause I felt like that's going to help every state association with their history. Yeah. And eventually it'll help. It'll help Dort and Sandy and AL when they announce it'll help, you know, all the guys at flow and they're broadcasting. It'll help you know, whoever it'll help Willie with his history digs. It'll help, you know, Earl with his uh, Fargo all American college signing. stuff. there's just so many things that can help. And ultimately, I just like uh, to, to to find something that's valuable uh, to the sport that pe- everybody can use is great. And then the icing on the cake is, you know, they I get to, I get to be the the soundtrack for it. So that is just that is really cool. Yeah, it is. It is. And and like I said, you were a resource for me from day one, and I immensely appreciate that. I appreciate you coming on and you know talking some stories and just uh, going through some of the the history and letting people know how things work behind the scenes, right? A lot of the time people are watching what's happening on the mat and they're watching our videos talking about what's happening on the mat or giving them this anecdote or what this coach said, or when I spoke to, you know, Stroniolo the other day or this, that, and whatever, and whatever, but it's the people that you, you hear that you don't realize that you hear, right? Until they say something you don't like. And a lot of those times, it's it just kind of passes by if it's something that you think is really cool but the soundtrack to sports is always going to be the announcers obviously me as a dodger fan right now i'm watching these games and you know i'm listening to the announcers because i'm in tune with those things but a lot of people aren't but that's why i thought it would be really cool to just see what happens in your world right it's very different to prepare for something when you're announcing it for thousands and thousands of people um you know when i'm doing a match you know, when I was doing Princeton's matches every every couple of weeks when I was on the East Coast, it's a different preparation. You know, when I'm going to, to Nashville this year and calling the journeyman event, it's a different preparation than just sitting and being on a podcast, you know, and that's the that's the part that I don't think people understand. Um, but that's the really cool part of this job from my standpoint of sitting and talking on a podcast with somebody like you or being on on a live mic and calling 
move by move matches, whether it be a lead eight or, or something that, that goes down to journeyman. So um, that, like I said, that's why I thought it would be awesome to get your perspective on how things were in Paris and how things are at a world championship, how you prepare for, for these things to say a bunch of names in different languages <laughs> that, you know, isn't, you know, first, second or third nature. It's, it's very different. So, you know, and not only that, but just to let people know that this is something, if you want to pursue it, that is out there and this is how you go about it. Right. And obviously not everybody's road is the same, mm -hmm. but these are the jobs in sports that people covet a little bit, but don't realize are out there because they're watching the first takes and they're, they're trying to get on the dream jobs and stuff like that, where you really got to pay your dues. I mean, you, you said the word agate in there and I know most people uh, that are yeah. really watching this have no idea what that is, but those are the things that I had to learn when I was a 20 something working for a newspaper, what the hell is agate? You what know what agate is? Agate is, is, and I'm saying this now because, uh, you know, JD Raider just posted something on, on flow about uh, the, the D one history, the D one programs. And that's something I've been doing this drop project for 15 years where I'm tracking things down and we're, you know, you go through the guides, the amateur wrestling news is the NCA guides agate. That's, that's the that's history. The that is where the documentation is. It's not the it's not the ten inch story in the newspaper that might mention, might mention four names and have a uh, have a have a quote that was written with fifteen minutes to go on deadline. It's the box score. It's the names, the results. That is you know for this historical project I'm working on. If it wasn't for Agate, I wouldn't be able to tell you how many how many schools were existing in let's see nineteen seventy four. Just just shot in the dark. I've tracked. Uh, 1973 there were I, i've got at least 535 college wrestling teams just, that's all because of agate i can tell you that right now just because of agate so the little things in the newspaper that was uh <laughs> those things pay off in the end and you know that's one thing wrestling i hope we do a better job is documenting everything moving forward so 25 30 years from now there's not another weird version of me floating around trying to do this stuff because we don't need too many more <laughs> i'm enough but uh one thing i also want to point out too is um when we're in this role too, when you're interviewing people, when, you know, I've done over 3000 podcasts, you've, you, you interview wrestling coaches uh, multiple times a week. Now we, we get comfortable on this side of the microphone on the other side of the microphone. That's where you can tell I get, I get a little fly. I'm much more comfortable, you know, not talking about myself. I'm yeah. much better uh, with, with a, with a craft beer in my hand at, at B-dubs after, a, after a day in Fargo where I can you know, BS and talk about other things. So, um, you know, I am my own favorite subject, but I'm really not good at talking to my own favorite subject. So, um, I invite anybody wants to, wants to, wants to chat, usually a tournament, that's the best way to find me. And if you're, you're, you're a new announcer, if you want to break into it, drop me a line. I'm on Twitter at Jason M. Bryant. My email is Jason at Bryant wrestling.com. Uh, I know Kelby Bachman had reached out before he did the Augsburg, uh, Wartburg duel. I know Josh Rosado down at Messiah. He's, he's working as a GA, I think this year at Ryder and their sports information office. These are, these are people that, that want to get into it. Connor Mills was at Ohio U. He's been working with Ken Berger for years at, at the, at the beast of the East. So, you know, there's, there's announcing gigs because, and there's, there's PA announcing Facebook groups. I mean, and, and in those groups, there's people that do like high school baseball and the guy that does the Atlanta Braves. And then, you know, Sean Parker, who did the T he got the T wheels gig over me. He just got the, the Charlotte Hornets job and he's in there. So there's, there's resources out there. And if, if in wrestling, you like wrestling and you need tips, you want to get into it. You want to do you, you may be like I was a terrible, you, you attempted wrestling, but you like it. You can find a way around the sport. You know, that's one thing. If, if wrestling people don't run people off like that, don't run people like me off because who knows what else we could do. Cause I was, wasn't going to do anything for my wrestling team as a wrestler. I guess what I'm in a, a stats guy and I'm an announcer guy. Guess what? We had a Matt light and I'm announcing Pocos and great bridge. And then, you know, it's, it's, you know, those people, care about the sport because they're not beaten up and burned out by it. You give them an interest into it, whether it be announcing, whether it be doing stats, whether it be, you know, doing your radio, you know, there's so much streaming opportunities now. Uh, there are a lot, of, a lot of people like me that may not be athletically gifted enough to be on a wrestling mat, but they like the sport of wrestling, include them in your programs too. And if you're that kid that wants to be included in your program, ask. And if you need, you know, reach out, you know, there's a lot of us here that cover the sport of wrestling that didn't do squat. And guess what? We're, we love the sport. We're around the sport. We get to spend a lot of time in it and we get to spend a lot of time around people we like around the sport because we have a shared interest and some of us have a shared uh, experience. Some of us are a lot better than others, but uh, there's a lot of hacks out there that just love it. So yeah. don't give up on that. Uh, and I'll tell you what, Ken Berger was the, the first guy that showed me the power of the man with the microphone because my first ever high school match was at the Beast of the East tournament. I was an O and O freshman wrestling up 
at 152 pounds when I was a natural 145. And by natural, I mean, I was weighing in at 142 wrestling 145 and had to drink a ton and eat a ton to weigh in at at least 149 pounds to wrestle 152. And I was wrestling a guy that I, I don't even remember his name at this point, but he was one of the top guys in the country, if not the top guy. And at BCD East back then, they announced the accolades of these wrestlers. Oh, yes. <laughs> Whereas there was a lot of fanfare that went into it. And it and I'm, I'm sure you can probably pull it up right now. But oh, I'm was, trying to. What, what year was it, that? Uh, 2002, 2001, something like that. Um, so, yeah. And so, let's see. So it would have been so the two. Uh, so, so your freshman year would have been what? So it was your freshman year? It's freshman or sophomore year. I think it was actually my sophomore year. Yeah. It was my so first that would have been the December sophomore. of, let's see, what year did you graduate? 2005. Five. So it would have been, so four or three. It would have been 2002, yeah. 2003. So, so my, December but, but my, that was when I, when I, I knew what the power of this was because I had heard him announcing one of the top guys in the country and all his accolades. And I think it might've been CP Schlatter. That was the number one seed in my bracket. Um, either him or Dustin. It was one of the Slater brothers, I believe. Or Slater, Slater was uh, in o two o three. CP was the one at one fifty two. Yeah, this is see. This is what I geek he, he out announced, about and he announced him in my bracket, and I, I do not think I, I. I think I won like two matches at Beast of the East when I was in high school. I was not very good. Okay, yeah, David McCarty from LaSalle. That was the first round loss. Yeah, and then I may have won like one match on the backside, and then ended up losing. Um, but they announced they announced later. And when they announced him, there was a lot of music. There was, you know, number one in the country, number one, all these things. And I was like, that is the power of the man with the microphone. And that's, you know, so so thank you to him for striking. Now, you won two matches on the backside. Striking fear in into me as a as a young 15-year-old sophomore back then. So, you know. Jeez, you know what's crazy it. about that bracket? Is who was third? Who was third in that bracket? Josh Glenn. So CP Schlater beat Seth Garvin in the finals. Josh Glenn was third. Troy uh, Taylor Letters was fourth. Yep. Let's see. Fifth, we didn't hear much from. Scott Fisher from Colonial Forge was in there. Mac Lunas was in there. Yeah. Yeah. Mac Lunas was eighth in that bracket. And then also um <laughs> Jack Black from Absagami, I think was like the heavy either the heavyweight or the 215 or the one, maybe the 189. Um, Jeff Black. Jeff Black. Yeah, because his and brother Lay Black was a monster coming out of high school. Jeff Black, and he, and I'll never forget. I think he pins in the finals or something, and he did like a celebration, and I was just like, and he just mauled everybody throughout the entire tournament. I was like, that's oh wow, he had beaten Josh Haynes and Matt Maciag back to back. Yeah, I'd be that's celebrating too. He was a he was an absolute monster, and I and that's and, the, that's what needs to be a show too is go through brackets, and be like, oh, you know, that's the geeky yeah. stuff that I freaking I mean, love. But, but that's but that's really what it was for me when I I was just like, man, I'm I'm I mean, Beast of the East was a very you know, no pun intended, but it was a very different beast back back then. Yeah, and the guys that were in that bracket with me, I, I you know, and I'm I'm a young I'm a young guy. There's, like I said, I'm O and O at this point because I didn't start as a freshman. Um, and it's just like, and the funny thing is, is I literally just talked to Matt Valenti yesterday, uh, and he actually wrestled a teammate of mine in the, um, what was it? The, the Lions classic, the Keystone classic and, and beat my teammate, Jeremy Hartram in overtime, uh, at the Jeremy Keystone. Hartram. That was, was he the one that went to NC state? He did. He's now the head coach now. of my high school. He's now the head coach of my high school, but those like, just like reminiscing on all those things right and like i said beast of the east i had no idea what i was getting into there was yeah. another hartram wasn't there uh justin he's also yeah because he went to bucknell right yep yeah. yep but man, I mean, pre pre drop bucknell pre, pre yeah before then yep but yeah i mean like beast of the east <laughs> when i heard these these guys being announced and i heard their their national accolades and things like that i i mean i was just like i was a kid but that's where the the power of the microphone came in so you know sitting here and talking to you and listening to you being the, the soundtrack of a jordan burroughs you know title of of um, a meets title of helen's title and then you make it sound it. a lot cooler 
<laughs> yeah, but I, I mean, that's, that's oh, yeah, truly that's, what it is because everyone- I need you has, as my hype man. That's what we and, need. <laughs> everyone has those moments, right? We, we were, you know, like I said, watching watching the, the, the Dodger game where the other night Freddie Freeman hits that that grand slam in order, oh, that was in order for them to awesome. win. And they're talking about before it happens, this is the things that you do in your backyard. This is the things that you hear. You hear the crowd, you hear the announcer, you hear all of, all of those things. And when, like I said, when I'm sitting here and I'm talking to you and I'm like, you know, you are the soundtrack of these moments, the moments where we're in the gym and we can hear everything, but we hear nothing. You know, that's where you guys come into play. And as I said, Kimberly was that guy for me where I heard everything as I was trying to warm up and it just struck fear into me. It was my first varsity match ever. My singlet was baggy. My, you know, I, I, it just was a moment that I'll always go back to. I mean, you, you flash forward what years and years and years. I mean, just, just the other day I was looking at my last fight, which was 11 years ago. And I'm like, the person in that, in that cage is not scared of anyone. The kid at beast of the East nearly wet himself just hearing the fanfare of the top seed in CP Slater, right? Like just very different, but you guys are the soundtrack of all of those things. When you look back at all the things that you, that go on in a career, you know, I can remember my uncle's fight at, at Caesar's palace and hearing Michael Buffer for the first time announce him. Those are the things that give you chills. It's less about, and maybe for me, it's less about what I did or what my uncle accomplished or what I watched my brothers do and more about the moment. And you guys encapsulate that moment from start to finish as you announce somebody coming to the mat and then you announce them walking out. And that's just like a very big deal that I think that unless you're in tune with it to a point where you don't like something that someone says, where you want to complain, you forget that these things are being said and you forget what announcements you are hearing because you're in those moments. But for somebody that just accomplished that, you, like I said, you hear everything and you hear nothing. And that's the the greatest part about it is you're just in those moments, those in those moments, and you are literally the soundtrack to that. So that's always been really cool for me. It's what's been really cool for me to listen to you throughout this entire conversation. Um, as I said, you've been a resource for me for years and years and years. And I appreciate it. And I can't wait to get to NCAAs. This year we're in Philly. We're, we're close to my hometown, an hour away. Um, don't ask me about any of the bars because I haven't been there in years. And oh, I got I, I, I've got people that know that one taken care I of. I have no <laughs> idea. I don't have a problem go. when I but go to Philly. I'm I get told where to go. To. And I'm like, oh, all right, I'll meet you there. Yeah. But I'm like I said, I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to having a beer with you and Hazard and and having some fun. Honestly, uh, I can't wait to hear you announcing uh, Iowa versus Iowa State. If I had it my way, I'd be there, but I'll be watching from home and obviously taking notes and doing the things that I do on my end. But like I said, I appreciate you sitting down and chopping it up with me. Um, and it's it's always appreciated every time we get a chance to talk. But this is the first time we're doing it on camera. But yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like I, like I said, I appreciate I appreciate the opportunity. I know it's uh, it's one of the things like, yeah, we've been talking about it for months, probably years. And it's like, all right, let's sit down and knock this out. Yeah. But no, like I said, it's been awesome. And uh, looking forward to chopping it up in Philly.